The coin is dropped from a hot air balloon at 300 meters and rising at a rate of 10 meters per second. So prior to the coin being dropped, it is rising at uh, 10 meters per second. Okay? This basically gives us an initial velocity. Find the time required for the coin to hit the ground. Ah, this does seem, this strikes me as terribly dangerous. Uh, let's see, balloon. Whoop. So first thing I do is I draw a picture. Ooh, can I do this? Is this, uh, maybe if I turn it around, I need a different color, maybe blue. There we go. I am, uh, ah. let's do this. Rotate around. I know I'm kind of getting lost in drawing the picture. I should focus more on the problem. This is a uh, fatal flaw of me. If I was a Shakespearean character, I would, this would be my fatal flaw. Whoop. There we go. You go away. Over here. You do not need to be this artistic. And really the hot air balloon is pretty superfluous. All that really matters is the coin that's dropped out. So the coin is dropped, but it's actually kind of like it's thrown because it starts out at, um, I'm gonna write it like this with 10 meters per second and then down like that. There, It doesn't mention any um, horizontal speed, but I'm gonna draw the horizontal speed in there just so I can, it's clear for the picture. So we have a coin that starts up at 10 meters per second and then comes back down. And so, I'm going to start by writing the kinematic equation, equations. So A equals A. So we have an acceleration that's constant. V equals AT plus V naught. And then we have a distance X, which is one half AT squared plus V naught T plus X naught. Now, this is all in the Y direction. So even though I wrote X's, you can use it for any dimension that you would like. In this case, we would like to use it for Y. And when I write these out, I'm going to write them in terms of, I'm going to write the variables in terms of y, just kind of help keep it straight in my head. So y final, so this is the final over here, will be, I'm going to call that zero on the ground. Uh, y initial will be 300, will be 300 meters. Acceleration, I'm going to say negative 9.8, and that's meters per second squared. T equals question mark, because that's what we're trying to find, time required. I think we're going to get quadratic. Um, an initial velocity equals 10 meters per second. So I think we're going to get a positive time and a negative time. Yep. So basically, we'll get something that looks kind of like this, where the coin is actually thrown at this point. It comes up a little bit and then comes back down. And this will be time t equals 0. And basically, if you backtrack that arc all the way, you'd find some negative time, theoretical negative time, when the coin would have been thrown from the ground. Okay, so looking at this, again, we have, I'm going to leave that to zero, so we have negative 4.9t squared, looking up here, plus 10t plus 300 equals zero. I am going to rearrange this so that the A term is positive. It doesn't have to be. Um, I just feel a little bit more comfortable when my first term is positive. So just multiply everything by negative 1. Okay, so now we're going to do the quadratic equation. Negative B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC square rooted all over 2A, which is 10 plus or minus... Um, b squared, which is, I'm going to call that 100, minus 4 times 4.9 times negative 300. And that negative 300 will then give us a um, positive number overall, all over 2 times a, so I'm going to call this 9.8. Okay? And for this, I'm going to go to Wolfram, and I'm going to look at the positive um, time. Maybe? Yes. So we'll have, uh, let's see, try to remember this real quick. Whoop. Wolfram, 10 plus square root of quantity 100 minus 4 times, I think A was 4.9. Yeah, 
and then we had negative 300. I'll write that as this, negative 300, all divided by 2a, where a was 4.9, and so 9.8, and we get 8.9, okay, so let's make sure, 10, 100, boop, boop, boop. check real quick, 10, 10, 4, 4.9, yeah, it looks reasonable. I'm good at this. So we get 8.91 seconds equals 8.91 seconds. And that's for the plus. I'll call this T2 because that's the should be the bigger one. And then T1, which you don't have to do this because I'm pretty sure our first answer is the one we want will be negative 6.87, negative 6.87. So T equals negative 6.87 or 8.91 seconds. So let's take what we got here, bum, bum, bum. hopefully it's an answer. It is, haha, yes. So one of our possible answers is 8.91. So just to kind of backtrack, look at what we did here. We're given this crazy scenario, which you wouldn't do because it's dangerous. Well, not dangerous for you, but, you know, for the coin and the person who the coin hits on the ground. A coin is dropped from a hot air balloon that is 300 meters and rising at a rate of 10 meters per second. So basically have this initial velocity given to this coin. Find the time required for the coin to hit the ground. So we say, all right, T equals zero is when the coin is released. We write up our kinematic equations. We plug in our values. Now we usually, I usually write my kinematic equations in terms of x, but I just have the knowledge in my head that this can work for any dimension. This time I'm going to use it for y. So I say that, all right, y final is going to be the ground. y initial is going to equal 300 meters above. The acceleration is negative 9.8 because it's going to be falling downward. Uh, T, it's question mark, we don't know what it is, it's worth searching for. And initial velocity is 10 meters per second positive. Specifically, this 10 meters per second is opposite of the acceleration. And that's just kind of a mental cue that you should make sure that's where it's going. Okay, then we plug it in, we get a quadratic, we use a quadratic equation. Quadratic formula? Quadratic formula. Equation has to have an equal sign. Uh, quadratic expression? I don't know. Okay. Focus, focus. We solve it, um, the equation, and we get two answers. One's negative, as expected, and then one's positive. And so that positive value is going to be how much time it, um, and further from where a coin is dropped that it will hit the ground. So I hope this helped. hope this kind of gave you an idea of how to solve these sort of kinematic equations. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you.